All right, good morning, Bethlehem Church. I know that the sun is shining, and sometimes that can either be good or bad, depending on whether or not you like the heat or not. But I think that's the way that it is about with a lot of things. We can find things that we enjoy and things that we don't. We can find things that bring us pleasure and things that don't. We can always find something to either be thankful about and praise about, or we can complain about. And man, we've heard a lot of complaints over 2020. I mean, how many times have you heard somebody say, let's just have a do-over, let's just get December here, let's just start 2021, whatever, whatever that is. And so I'm kind of excited because we're starting out this new series, Count Your Blessings, and I think that it's more fitting than ever. I mean, it may seem like it's an odd place because of the things that's taken place over this past year. And here we are, we're in the eighth month already, and I know that things have been different, but man, it seems like it flies by and it does every year. When I was little, it seemed like Christmas was 10 years away, but now that we're older, you blink and it's Christmas time. And so as this time is flying by this year, we can often get wrapped up in what's going on around us. And here we are, we're starting this series, Count Your Blessings. Like, are we blessed? Like, ha- have blessings come to us this year? Now, I know there's been a lot of things going around us, a lot of negativity, and maybe there's been things that's really impacted you, but... Are there blessings that has come to you, particularly, say, this year? Are there blessings? You see, that's why I think that it's time for us to count our blessings because there's so many good things that happen to us. And many of that, we often take for granted. So when you hear that phrase, you know, count your blessings, what comes to your mind? And I know what comes to my mind is in this little red uh, hymnal, and there's a song called Count Your Blessings. And it was written in 1897 by Johnson Oatman Jr. Count Your Blessings. And this is the chorus of it. It says, Count Your Blessings, name them one by one. Count Your Blessings, see what God has done. Count Your Blessings, name them one by one. Count Your Many Blessings and see what God has done. Now, let me just take you on a little journey. He wrote that song in 1897 air conditioners had not been invented yet how many of us could you know make it without air conditioner well we all probably could but we wouldn't be enjoying it automobiles were not here yet cell phones were not here yet and this this cracks me up our kids will ask us hey what was your favorite thing to do on a kindle when you were a kid but they wasn't here like wow how old are you and it's just like See, these modern conveniences, we often, we, we take for granted it, whether it be air conditioning or uh, our automobiles, and man, we, we can kind of struggle with that about counting our blessings, because a lot of times we consider our blessings to be upon conveniences in our favor. I mean, how many of us woke up this morning and took that big breath of fresh air? God, I thank that I can breathe. Thankful that my heart's still beating. And thankful I was able to get my family up. Thankful that my car started. <laughs> like, we are surrounded by blessings. But yet, we're surrounded by a culture that's trying to tell us what our blessings are. What I want to do during this series is try to get our focus on where it should be. Because the world doesn't need to tell you when or how you're blessed. But that should flow from God. About being blessed. If you have your Bibles, please turn with me to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. And Apostle Paul wrote this. And at the time in which he wrote this, he was really trying to give this final encouragement to the church at Thessalonica. And when he concludes this, he gives some very powerful (laughs) closing remarks. And in chapter 5, verse 18, he, he begins this part. This is kind of in the middle of this part. I'm going to kind of jump around here just a little bit. But I want to start with this verse. And it says, Give thanks in everything, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Give thanks in everything. Now that in itself can be challenging because 
Everything is one of those words in the Bible just like nothing. It's word for word. It doesn't have any other meaning. Everything means everything. Give thanks and everything. And this is not a thanksgiving message that we should, nor is it something that we should be sitting down daily and just start counting out our blessings. But it's an attitude of our heart that our attitude should be pleasant that we are able to receive all that God gives us and be pleased and be pleased. But we can be so greedy that if it takes an extra minute at the fast food lane, we, we get upset. Or if a red light catches us for 30 seconds, we're upset and think that God's favor is not upon us. And I'm guilty of that too. Whether it be going down Center Street or whatever and all the lights turn green and I didn't get stopped by a single one of them, I'm like, but see how that, that's just a circumstance. Give, give thanks in everything. And what he's really talking is that God has blessed us with life and we have joy. Now, I'm not going to get on the joy bus. We spent six months this year talking about, about joy. And we should be joyful and give thanks in everything, recognizing and not taking things for granted, recognizing that God is most definitely in control, and not taking for granted what he has blessed us with, what he has blessed us with. So many blessings. So we are to give thanks in everything. But he also says, for what? This is God's will for you. His will for you is to be thankful, to have an attitude of gratefulness to where you would see things as blessings and count them as blessings. Then it doesn't necessarily mean that everything is going to go your way because look what he says in this next, this, I'm going to jump back up. This is verse 16, so I'm going to go back up. Verse 16, it says two words, rejoice always. Now, I did spend a, a, a message uh, earlier this year talking about uh, joy, particularly in the, about rejoice because the word rejoice comes from joy. We are to rejoice what does this say? Always. Now, I know and I understand that there are times that you do not feel like rejoicing. There's times that you don't feel very enthusiastic. Enthusiastic. You, you're not with it. During 4-H camp, this was going, uh, when we was young, we'd go to 4-H camp, and they would have this song. They would say, am I happy? And anytime time somebody said that, you had to say, boy, are we enthusiastic. H-A-P-P-Y, I feel fine. I still remember that from the seventh grade. And there'd always be somebody who are like, I don't feel enthusiastic. I want to go back to bed. And many times that's our attitude, that we'll find something else that we would rather be doing other than where we're at. So rejoice always. How can we rejoice always? Things are not always in your favor, and they're not. This, uh, this past Thursday, I was ready for work. I left a few minutes early, got in the car, told everybody bye, and I was headed to work. Got out on the 71, I was heading towards Gate City, and then there was this noise. I was like, that ain't right. So then I, I pulled over at the Dollar Journal. I was like, huh, I've had a blowout, about the size of a quarter, maybe a little bit bigger than a quarter. I had a blowout. I'm like, well, it looks like I'm going to be changing the tire. So then... So then, I go and start getting stuff out of the tire, and then the, the wheel, it would not come off the car. And I tried to jack it up and down, try to beat it off. It would not come off the car. And this will happen to a man that comes by, and I had this big trailer hitch, so I whacked that thing, and it finally did come off. And so I was driving to work, and I was a little bit late, and I was thinking, man, I didn't wreck the car. I actually, I text my buddy John. It's like current situation. It was a picture of the the tire. He was like, "Hey, everybody, you, know, you okay? Car okay?" He's like, "Yep, I'm good. The car's good." I'm like, "Man, I'm blessed. Car's good. I'm good. I'm a few minutes late. I'm okay. I'm a little sweaty, but I got spare deodorant in my desk at work. I'm good. I'm good. Rejoice always." Even in things that are not in our favor, we can find something to rejoice over. Can we not? Do you see what he's creating here is an attitude of gratefulness where we can count our blessings. Count our blessings. It doesn't mean that everything is going to go in your favor, nor does it mean that you're going to have everything that you want. 
that we can rejoice always. Always. We can find something in our favor that we can rejoice about. For this morning, for that morning, I was thankful that I had a spare. I was thankful that I, was, I was, that I had a spare. And because of that, everything was good. It's all good. I called my buddy up and said, hey, I need to order a tire. He said, all right, be here tomorrow. And I said, I'll come by Monday. All right, good. It's all good. It's all good. You see how this is an attitude of our heart? Was it aggravating? Yes. Would I have chosen not to have a flat? Yes. To see how it's an attitude of our heart. So I was challenged on this very message this week. Rejoice always. Church, do you have this something this morning, right now? I want you just to quietly just give it to God. Something right now that you can just rejoice God over. Just right now, just give it to God. God, I'm thankful. I rejoice over. Just give it to God right now. Something. That's something you can rejoice over. Hey, I was able to get here this morning. I was able to breathe. I'm able to go to work. I've still got a job. Rejoice always. Rejoice always. And then he follows that up with another two-word verse. Verse 17. And it says, pray constantly. Pray constantly. How in the world are you supposed to get on your knees and constantly in prayer to God? No, but that this should be an attitude of our heart that we are in constant communication with the Father. Sometimes I call them flyer prayers. Walk on and talk with God. Hey, Father, I need you. How you doing? Help me be a blessing to others. Just talking to God. A, a constant communication with the Father. And you're talking about bringing peace to your life. Bringing peace to your life. Just being in communication with the Father. Hey, God, thank you for my friends. God, I thank you for my family. Just talking with the Father. Lord, I need you here. Lord, I need you here. Just a, an attitude in which we are just talking with the Father. I mean, could you imagine? Could you imagine how your attitude would change just talking with the Father throughout the day? While you're at work, while you're on your mail route. God, help me as I work on this valve. God, help me as I go into this patient's office. God, help me as I do this chart. God, help me as I help this customer. God, help me as I deliver this. God, help me as I... Could you imagine how just having that constant flow of that communication with the Father, how our attitude would change to an attitude of gratefulness in which we would be counting our blessings? Because we're talking with the Father. What did you do whenever your parents was around? Did you act different than when they wasn't? Oh, man, I remember we'd be mean to, whether it be our brother or cousin, we'd be doing things maybe we ought not be doing. And as soon as, as, soon as Dad would show up on the scene, yes, sir. Completely changed. And as soon as he would depart, we were back throwing rocks at each other or whatever we possibly do. As soon as dad was on the scene, it would be different. That's what it's like having a constant prayer with the Father. We recognize his presence with us. Now how would your environment be different in that communication of having the presence of the Father with you? Do you see how this is starting to, to build this momentum where we would count our blessings? And then, what do you, now what we're doing again is building up the verse 18. What does he say now? Give thanks in everything because we're rejoicing always, we're praying constantly, and we can give thanks in everything. Why? Because we have something to rejoice over and we're in communication with the Father. This is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Don't stifle the Spirit. King James says don't quench the Spirit. You want the Spirit of God to be all over you and Him to be working through you. But we can't do that when we're bitter. It's hard to do that when we're angry and aggravated. This means we can still walk with the Father and we can still get aggravated. We can. I guarantee you that you're going to be less reactive or less explosive when you're with the Father. Verse 20, it says, don't despise prophecies. This is talking about this, the word of God, particularly in the future aspect, that we don't despise it, but that we take notice of it. That we really take notice of it. Don't despise prophecies. So I'm going to go ahead and, and share this with you. On Wednesday night, starting this Wednesday, we're going to start doing a Bible study, and we're going to open it up to, to anybody uh, that wants to do it. It's going to be online only through, uh, through Facebook Live, and we're going to be going over through Revelation. Uh, through the book of Revelation. We do have a, a book. Uh, this is by Max Lucado. You can get this off of Amazon. If you've got it in Kindle form, it's you, can, uh, you can share this with. You can do it 
This is going to be the format that I'm going to use. It's 12 weeks long. You do not have to have the book to participate. But we're going to kind of go along with this same verse, don't despise prophecy. We're going to try to understand Revelation. And over the past several months, I, I've been really asked a lot about Revelation and the end times and what that looks like. So if you'd like to join us, you can do so on Uplift Church's Facebook page. And you can join us and we're going to be going through Revelation over the next 12 weeks. This again, this book is by Max Lucado, and it's called Life Lessons from Revelation. Because we're going to try to really understand and not despise prophecies. Really try to understand what it means and what it means for us today. He also goes on to say, which I think is kind of odd that it comes after this. But test all things and hold on to that which is good. Hold on to what is good. So... We have this idea of revelation that it's maybe all bad. It is not all bad. Yes, there is judgment and condemnation, but there is also deliverance in eternity. For believers, it is a message of hope. So he says, but test all things. Hold on to what is good. Now, I want to stop right here just for a minute because I think this is where we need some house cleaning in our lives. There's a show on Netflix and about this lady that helps people organize and clean. And she's like, if it doesn't bring you joy, get rid of it. I think that we need to do some of that in our lives. Hold on to what is good. If Facebook does nothing but bring you sorrow and pain and depression, chuck it. Get rid of it. If the news does nothing but depress you, cut it off. If you're not disciplined to cut it off, then cut your cable off. Get rid of whatever is not good in your life. Now, we're not speaking about your spouse. Love on your spouse. Fight through them through thick or thin. Kids, you can't get rid of your parents. Don't get rid of your kids. Hang on to them. They love you. But everything else, hold on to what is good. Hold on to what is good. Maybe you need some house cleaning in your life. Get rid of that that's bringing you down. Does it bring you joy? I'm telling you, if social media is it, chuck that thing as fast as you can. Because we need to hold on to what is good. What we're talking about, rejoice always. Pray constantly. He says, give thanks in everything. So what we're saying here, hold on to what is good. We need to get rid of what is not. What is not bringing us joy? What is not fulfilling us? And then he says in verse 22, he reinforces it. Stay away from every kind of evil. Stay away from every kind of evil. It's a warning. Church, we need to stop making bad decisions and blaming them on God and everybody else. If you make a bad decision, you're going to have to pay the consequence. It's that simple. So what does this mean for us today? Church, I think it's time that we count our blessings. Aren't you tired of all the bad and negativity? The, the words out of people's mouths, it's always so much of the the same thing and i hate mask and i hate this i want to get back to normal and all this things are different but we can count our blessings through it so that's what we want to do this morning is we want to kick off this series with you counting your blessings what is it this morning that you have that you can just say god i am thankful for this And this, God, I am blessed for this and this. There's a friend of mine. He says this all the time. PJ, I am blessed. Things don't fall on his lap either. He works hard. Works hard. Works hard. Are you blessed this morning? Are you blessed? Are you blessed? I think many of us will say, yes, we are. We're blessed. And church, one of the best things we can do is have an attitude of gratefulness and joy. That we can rejoice always and pray constantly, talking with the Father, taking time to talk to Him and thanking Him for all that He has done. I go back to that song of count your blessings. Count your many blessings, name them one by one. Can you name some this morning? Because here in just a minute, we're going to take a time of prayer for you to talk to the Father. And you can start naming them one by one. He says, count your blessings, see what God has done, recognizing God's hand and life upon you. He says, count your many blessings, name them one by one, count your many blessings, see what God has done. Church, this morning, I want you to take an opportunity to 
talk to the Father, thanking Him for your blessings, recognizing them. Maybe there's something that you that is hindering you that you need to remove out of your life, that you need that you need to remove, that's keeping you from being blessed. That that is whether it be rotting you or impacting you, that's affecting you in a powerful way, that's bringing you down, not allowing you to be blessed. So maybe it's time to chuck that, whether it be news, whether it be social media, what, whatever that is. It's time that we count our blessings. Would you pray with me right now? Father, we thank you so much for all your many blessings, how good you are to us. And we're thankful, Father, this morning that we have been so blessed. We've been blessed, Father, in ways that we've even forgotten. We've become so accustomed to certain things in our life and their conveniences. And when they're not there, we get agitated and sometimes we get bitter. Father, right now, search us out. Reveal yourself unto us, Father, as we just start talking to you, counting our blessings, the things in which we are thankful for. As you continue to pray, I just want you just to talk to the Father. Count your blessings. Name them one by one. Maybe you want to start off by thanking Him for salvation. Thank Him for your parents, your spouse. Maybe you want to thank Him for your kids. What about your health? This morning, would you just take an opportunity to talk to the Father? Count your many blessings. Count your many blessings. Name them one by one. Maybe it's the health and strength that you can work. Maybe it's for your hardworking spouse. Just count your blessings. count your blessings. Maybe there's something uh, this morning that you've got going on in your life. That maybe it's hindering you in your blessings. It's bringing negativity to your life. It's, it's bringing you down. It, it doesn't bring you joy. Let's pray to remove that. Let's, let's pray to remove that. God, I... I I pray for those that have something in their life right now that, that maybe it's hindering them from being blessed. It's hindering them from counting their blessings and it's, it's not bringing them joy. God, I pray that you'd give them strength, encouragement, Father, that they can remove this. The willpower, Father, to shut it off, to chuck it. Help us, Father. That we can remove any distraction, anything that's not good, that's keeping us from you keeping us from being blessed. God, that we just might walk closely with you. Father, I pray for everyone that's watching online today. God, that you just bless them and help them, Father. As they're just sitting there, God, that they would just count their blessings. And Father, right now, as we just take a moment just to count our blessings, we thank you, Father, most of all for the greatest blessing. Jesus. I just want to give you a few more minutes. Just give you another minute just, just to talk to the Father. Just rejoice always. Pray constantly right now. I'm thankful this morning. I'm thankful. Grateful. Give it to the Father. Father, I'm thank, thankful for my friends. Thank you for placing them in my life. I'm thankful for our church. God, how we'll work, how we'll clean. God, I'm thankful for my family. God, I love them so much. May their life be a blessing because I'm in it. God, I'm thankful for a spouse who loves me despite my sometimes stubbornness and my faults. God, I'm thankful for a church family that we love one another. God, I'm thankful for our jobs. I'm thankful for the friendships that we have.
Probably this morning, we're just taking the time to set an attitude of gratefulness. We'll be count our blessings. That we wouldn't look to the world or social media to tell us what we're thankful for, but that we would recognize, God, your hand upon us, praying constantly, rejoice always, that we'd be thankful in everything. Help us, Father God, as we go throughout this week, there's going to be times that this is going to be challenged. It may be a flat tire, it may be a dead battery, it may be a problem at work, it may be a problem at home. Help us, God. We'll be able to take things in stride. Just do it the best that we can with a smile on our face, giving you the praise and glory and honor for all that you have done. Because, Father, you are not done yet. You're still alive, you're still healing, you're still mending, you're still restoring, and, God, you are most definitely still performing miracles. Use us, Father, in a mighty way. That as we go throughout this week, as we have smiles on our faces, we count our many blessings that people will be able to see you in us. And again, Father, we thank you for the greatest blessing that you've given us, salvation. All because of Jesus. It's in his name we pray. Amen. As you take a moment, you got some praise.